Why does the black man serve the white man? Why does everything the black man do benefit the white man? Why does the black man say freedom is doing what I want to do? And why is it that everything he wants to do enriches the European? Welcome to the desert of the real. There you go, R. Uh, passing it back. Oh, now, gee. Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus. Man. Jesus. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't even know where the fuck to begin. Okay. I'm I'm going to say that right now. I don't know where the fuck to begin. You know what? I do know where I'm going to begin. Um, what, what really ticked me off, you know, ever since this guy burst on the scene, has been, the, at least to me, the disturbing amount of support for this loud mouth just 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 ignorant motherfucker you understand <laughs> that's the first thing that really I, I just was amazed at how people of color embraced him and and I say that because had he just been a little bit different in the way he approached what he wanted to do, I would have respect for him. But Mac and, and you said this offline and also in our in our Facebook group that it's all about him. It's right. not even about the sons. You understand? You speak of the sons, but really it's you. You have mm-hmm. to have the limelight. You have to have the cameras focused on you. You have to have the mics shoved in your face. 24-7, it's all about you and your egotistical ass. You understand? Mm. I don't like the guy. Period. <laughs> you know, what you are doing, I don't give a fuck. What you are doing is detrimental to your son. You understand? I personally, after that clip, I don't have the confidence in you that you could teach a fucking kindergarten, let alone your son. Hmm. Okay. Oh, let me get in, please. <laughs> please do. Oh, please do. Please do. Yeah, I'm gonna turn it on you, brother. Go ahead. Go right ahead. Please proceed. Man, first of all, I whew, this dude, he got a lot of nerves sitting up here talking about where this guy comes from. Nobody knows who he is. Okay, well, when we pull up his stats, no one knew who he was because he was riding the bench. Everybody thought he was a tree at the end of the bench. <laughs> So what is he talking about not knowing right. somebody? And, and second right. of all, I mentioned this last night. I think the reason mm-hmm. why he's pulling his son out because right about right now, there's more views on YouTube of kids destroying his son, like Zion Williams just mm. took it to him because right. he really don't play D. None of them play mm-hmm. D. Not at all. No. And, no. And for him to say that Chino Hills was nothing before there. Correct me if I'm wrong. Did not Carmelo Anthony play for Chino Hills? I thought they'd been a powerhouse for like the last 20 years. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, then I mean, will you know think comes from there? There's a, there's, there's a couple of other uh, guys from college a bunch and of also mm-hmm. who are in the NBA who come from Chino Hills. So, Thank you. Right. So, I mean, he, he acting like he started it off on the map. I really want mm-hmm. to support the brother, but at this point, man, I mean, it's really like diarrhea just coming out the mouth, man. I, right. And, and then he's talking about the shoes. What what shoes? He, <laughs> man, that, that dude needs to stop. He's already put a target. He's already put a target mm-hmm. on his oldest son. Right. So his oldest son is going to have the hardest time uphill for the rest of his career because everybody, mm-hmm. like John Wall said, is going to go after him. They're going to give this guy yep. up that they best. Every single night, yeah. just because his father talked too damn much. Exactly. Mm-hmm. He needs to just, just stop putting all that extra pressure on his sons. Let them enjoy. It, it really was a, it, it was a feel-good moment when they first came on the scene. Like, yeah, I'm proud, proud of this brother. You know what I'm saying? He's he doing the right thing for his sons and everything. He trusts him. But now it's just a, he has horrible business etiquette. He sat up there mm-hmm. and made bad comments about the star players for each and every single one of the uh, gym shoe franchises. Right. So, of course, they don't want to do business with him because every time you come around, you open your big mouth. 
he might have gotten that deal. But no, he wanted to say something bad about Curry. That shut down Under Armour. He wanted to say something bad about KD. He said something bad, bad about LeBron. That shut down Nike. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody fooling with him. So, nah. man, this, this dude, and, and like I said, I don't see his oldest son as an impact player. I don't wish no ill will to the brother. Hopefully he proved me wrong. But it's one thing to be a basketball fan, and Max Levin can attest to this. It's another thing when mm-hmm. you actually play ball. When you see, when you play ball and you see another basketball player, it's like beyond the hype and all that, like, okay, I play mm-hmm. too. Like, I know this guy ain't taking nobody off the dribble. Yeah, mm-hmm. he got court vision. Yeah, he, mm-hmm. he can pass, but who who the hell can't pass? There's nothing special about this guy. I mean, really, I'm, I'm, and I'm not saying that to be funny. I'm just, seriously, right. there's nothing special about him that just makes you like, ooh, man, he, mm-hmm. he he got talent. He's going to be something to, a force to mm-hmm. reckon with. I don't see that with that guy. And everything he did in the summer was against <laughs> summer league talent, guys who exactly. probably ain't even going to make the squads. They ain't even going to make the roster, Okay. So when he starts going against NBA talent with these guys wanting to go after him like that, we'll see who the real player, who he actually is. Yep. Right. He needs to just shut up. And he needs to be homeschooled himself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. This gentleman, this gentleman laid the groundwork. When he came up with that statement, business etiquette, that is, right. that is all that needs to be. Yeah, that is it right there. Right. Mhm. Definitely. All right. uh, let, me, let me let me just stop. Hold, hold on, Mac. I got another caller with their hands up. Let me okay. bring this guy in, then I'm gonna let you uh, get your point in. Okay. Uh, no problem. Last four digits is uh, four two nine nine. Welcome to Interfaith. Please introduce yourself. Where are you calling from? What's going on, everybody? It's Chad. What's going on? Uh oh, there he What's is. Uh oh. How y'all doing, yes, sir? Hey, hang on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm just I'm just chilling here at work watching this Yankee game. You know. What's the score? Mm-hmm. Good game. The the score is it's far it's still far five four. To four. Right? Yeah, far to four, four Yankees. Yankees. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm watching. Yeah, me and my man watching this game, and, and we were just saying mm-hmm. that if only Greg Berg would be fucking healthy, you know what I mean? For a substantial yeah. time, I do yeah. have numbers, man. Do you you would have some fucking numbers. Yeah, do you yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the Yankee. I don't, don't want to go off topic, but. The Yankees did a good job, man, with the rebuild, man. Like they, they yep. they're probably a year early, a year or two early, but they they've done a good job, man. Or they uh, need yeah. another pitcher in the off season, you know. But anyway, what's going on, everybody? How's everybody doing? What's up, Lavar Ball, twenty four seven, Lavar Ball, all oh, the Levar. time, Lavar Ball, yeah. Lavar Ball, Lavar Lavar Ball, Lavar Ball is like a cockroach, man. He, when a nuclear war happens, right? <laughs> when <laughs> when geriatric Joffrey oh, presses that button, and that nuclear war happens, right? It's gonna be two things allowed: the cockroaches and the wall ball, mm. crackheads, <laughs> and crackheads. Three things and crackheads. Um, <laughs> but but uh, jokes aside, it's funny because I thought like a whole. It's the I, I have a problem with homeschool. I, well, I got a couple points. Um, mm-hmm. I have a problem with pulling your son out of school before his junior year for mm-hmm. basketball reasons. Right. Like you know what I'm saying? Like like pulling right. your son out of school should be more than just for basketball. Um, mm-hmm. but you know, pulling kids switching schools and leaving schools based on basketball or sports isn't anything new. Yep. What is new? What I've never seen though is just I'm, I mean, and you know, and there's there's nothing wrong with homeschooling. Like you know, you know what I mean? Like if, if home, like homeschooling, you don't have to be a teacher to homeschool. You, just, you get the books, make sure the kid is ready to take the test, the standardized test. Um, let me just do a correction. Carmelo Anthony is not right. from California. He didn't play at Chino Hills. He played at Oak Hill Academy. That's oh, the okay. Thanks. Correct. Oak Hill Correct. Academy is where all the kids went. A lot of the kids, John Wall and Rondo, and before them, a lot of guys, Jerry Stackhouse. You know, a lot of guys. Oak, Oak, Oak Hill, Oak Hill, Oak yeah. Hill, been getting people for 20, for centuries, forty years. Um, two yeah. of my good friends got poached there from New York City. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Augustus Caesar played basketball at Oak Hill Academy. Before he became emperor of Rome, 
But no, no, seriously though. You know what? You know what though? When I when I when oh, I read the article, <laughs> when I read the article, uh, <laughs> Richard making me laugh now. Exactly. Yeah. I'm gonna mute him for wet. a minute. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, sorry. No, when I when I read the article, I can see I can see all three parties involved. I can see the size of all parties. Like I, I can see the point of view of all three parties. Like there's nothing wrong with with the school for saying, you know what, he only got one kid left anyway, and we we want to break ourselves away from his influence and get us a coach who who we believe can stand his ground and you know and x him out. So I give I give right. him that credit. So I can see that point. On mm-hmm. on the part of the coach. I see his point. I'm the new coach here. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be here, uh, going forward after these next two years. So it's gonna be what I want. I'm not. I'm not gonna cow to you like the other guys have in the past. And mm-hmm. I want my own regimen. I, I, I have to gain the respect of parents and, and students. I, so I can see the coach right. And if what the ball ball is saying about the conversation he had with the coach, personal conversation he had with the coach, um, if he feels uh, uh, that he was, he, if he feels disrespectful in that conversation, well, he's a grown man. He is free to pull his son if he wanted to. Um, right. I don't agree with – well, once again, I, I would say I don't agree with pulling your son based on basketball to homeschool him. <laughs> but, um, but, 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 it's, but, I mean, but once again, they've already made it clear that, you know, we're put, we, we and my, me and my wife are a basketball, fa- are a basketball factory like Nike. <laughs> like, like, no, <laughs> we might as well be Oregon. Right. So our kids, you know, we know what we we know what we want from our kids. We know what they are now. Lamelo mm. Ball, over the off season, is now up to he he jumps to six foot five, which I thought was going to be big for him, being as small as he was before. The way he plays, he's six foot five. Mm-hmm. He's the number mm-hmm. seven recruit in his class. He's ranked as a five star uh, point guard, and he already has a scholarship. So he's not losing anything as far as basketball. And right. you know, Mac, you have the AAU teams. And you mm-hmm. can play on tournament teams and try travel on tournament teams. Now the Bulls, right. I saw I saw Lonzo Ball play with that big baller brand team. Um, I, they don't they don't believe in the tournament teams and and this and that because they their rationale is they like to keep a tight you know they little tight circle and blah 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 blah. So I, I'm interested in, in seeing if they're gonna put, if they're gonna, if he's gonna let him play in tournament teams in order to get that right. you know what I mean get more experience, but. He he already has the he already has the goal of having a scholarship at UCLA. So so that's out the way. Um, shit. If I was him, I would think about uh, shit. I mean, at this point in time, he's only sixteen, so I want to do it now. But at this point in time, if you have him with his own little shoe and Lonzo is doing well for himself, you might consider not even going to UCLA in two years. You might just go to fucking Europe until he's going to draft. Right. Then again, I, I thought I, I about mean, that. I mean. I mean you know, hold on, and I'm, I'm, I want to ask you a question directly, Matt, because you might have researched this already. The NBA rules, being that he's out of high school technically now, can he enter the draft in two years? That I'm not sure about, but we 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 yeah. can bring that up in a, in a later he show. He has to technically, but that's he, a he good has to question. Technically be re, yeah, he has to technically be. Re, oh. Re, oh, 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 no, 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 it is. It's one. The my NBA man got told me, just told me one year from graduation, so he yeah. probably can't go. Without graduating from high school, I think that yeah, he still have to wait one year after his graduating class. Yeah, yeah. So I think the NBA age from, limit is nineteen. Yeah, unless they change it in the new CBA, which is possible, which is possible, you might see a rule change back to the high school stuff. You'll either see a rule change to high school, out of high school again, or after two years in college. I, I really think they're going to change the one and done rule. But yeah. I think. I, th- I but I mean I, I mean listen man but Lavar Le- like, like I said man I can see all three parties have a a very a very good point in my opinion of what they did whether I agree with, with or whether I agree with it directly is is not the issue um once again if Chino Hills felt like enough like we we need a stronger voice and we're not gonna kiss this guy's ass anymore because we don't have to we got what we needed that's fine if the coach right. feels like I'm a, I'm a grown ass man. I'm not that young boy. I'm not that young boy that you had to yell at. Then that's fine too. And if Love Ball, again, Love Ball, Ball it felt felt, felt uh, 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 disrespected or whatever he would say that he felt and blah blah blah. I, well, I just he don't couldn't like get his way. He, made, he couldn't exactly. get his way. Right. I just don't like the fact of like, like, like my problem is you making that decision 
I mean, you are a parent, and he's only he is a minor, but you just making that decision for him like that. That that rubs me the wrong way. But LeVar Ball, man, I think I'm I'm so done talking about this fool, man. And shit, especially at the time where there's so much going on in fucking sports. I deal with this fucking guy. But um, yeah. Let me say this. Um, I got one previous, comment after you, Matt. Okay, the previous coach before the young guy was Steve Byick. He left. He left for thirty. Yeah. They they didn't lose any games. Why would he leave? Obviously, he couldn't get along with LeVar Ball. Mm-hmm. They bring in the new coach, Stephen Gallen, and him and LeVar had a tug of war that we, we saw come out in the news and, 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 you know, in the media. This third coach, Dennis Lattimore, is like, listen, this is my team, and it's disrespectful. LeVar, you're a coach as well. It's disrespectful for you because you know you don't do that. You don't come – to somebody's house and tell them how to run their house. He's the coach. Mm. Um, the administration you let Le- you you let Lavar Ball run over you, so he's he he's gonna run over you again. And if you, I don't know if y'all caught in the um in the in the two clips. The first clip he said I run Chino Hills basically. In the second clip, mm-hmm. he said, they saying I run Chino Hills, but I don't, so I'm leaving. So he, he sort of contradicted himself there. And right. my my problem with LeVar is you 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 can't run over everybody. You, you're definitely not going to run over UCLA, and you're not going to run over the Lakers. And um, my last point, Lonzo Ball is still mm-hmm. shooting bad. Two of nine in his first game. That's t- that's twenty two percent from the field. One of five from the three. He did have five points and eight assists and seven rebounds and two steals. Minnesota got blown. Um, the Lakers got blown out one hundred eight to ninety nine by Minnesota. I'm rest my case. Wow. I mean, with those stats, nothing else needs to be said. Um, I just think it's disgusting. This is all about power and control, which LeVar Ball has demonstrated. That's what he's all about. And what he needs to understand is I I know he wants nothing but the best for his sons, but, dude, it's 15 other kids, and they got – they want to play basketball. They might not go as high and have the aspirations that his sons have, but they want to play basketball too. And this is not right. the basketball diaries of our ball family show. Mm-hmm. He can't exactly. sit up there and, and have the offense and have everybody set up so his son can come down and take shots from half court to the crowd's amazement. Well, his Cherry son's going to have to play defense like everybody else, which he doesn't mm-hmm. want to do, which none of them want no. to do. And the reason he had a problem with the coach is the coach is like, hey, you know what? I got 16 kids to, to teach there you on go. top of. Dealing with all the your nonsense and everything. Right. Let me let me do me. In fact, what the coach should have told him is, "Won't you stay in your lane?" Mm. Try that. <laughs> Amen. Try that. And yeah. He, that um, he, he, Mac, you said something. I wanted to piggyback on shit. Uh, my fault. I forgot okay. what the hell it was now. <laughs> something I wanted to piggyback <laughs> on. But but no. But but uh, you know what? I've said before on on this show many times that Lonzo Ball. And shit, eventually all the kids. But Lonzo Ball, because he's the oldest right now, and he's surrounded by other people that can serve as father figures to him, and he'll be traveling. Lavar Ball, mm-hmm. he's not going to be under his father 24-7 anymore. And right. remember, he, he's 19 right now. He's going to get to a mm-hmm. point where he's going he's gonna to grow as a man. He's going to grow as a person. He's going to grow as a player. Right. Mm-hmm. He's going to be influenced mm-hmm. by other people. He, he has strong voices in his face right now. You have Matty Johnson. You have Kobe Bryant. You have Rob Palenka. You're gonna be the owner. You're, you're gonna Diddy be served. Buff. Yeah, you're gonna build with other. You're gonna build with other players. Never mind all this talk about targeting us back. Pro sports leagues or fraternities. After after whatever competition, these people talk to each other. They school each other. They learn yeah. from each other. Mm-hmm. They support each other. The Lonzo and I've said it before. If you're looking for Lonzo Ball to ex- to explode off the screen and go ooh ah ah ooh, it's not going to happen. That is his value. I, but 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 what I but but also like I said, he's gonna grow as a man, and I'm mm-hmm. very interested in seeing 
what happens when Lonzo gets his voice as far as mm, his father right. is concerned. What, what, happens when he, what happens when he finds his voice, when he can tell his father, stay in your lane, when he can, when he can tell your, his father, I can – you already saw the beginning of it in the summer league where he, 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 he decided to switch, 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 switch sneakers up, and the father goes, well, you know, he, he can do what he wants to do. That's the whole point. Mm. Big Willow brand. Now, that sounds like, well, uh, he made a decision. Ain't nothing I can do about it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump on that. <laughs> you know, what I'm right. we, we got a president does that. We got a president who does that nonstop, and and those two guys aren't too different from each other. But 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 no, I'm very interested in seeing the psychology play out of Lonzo Ball finding his voice as a man, and mm. and when we gonna see that division. <laughs> like well, like when uh, you're gonna right. get the vision and grow. That's interesting to me. That but that's interesting. Let me let me ask you this, Chad. Do you think it'll be a, a big blow up like we've seen um like say Floyd Mayweather and his father or um Sugar Shane Mosley and his father, you know, like with boxes where where they totally distanced themselves from their fathers for a moment. You know what though? No, I don't think so. I'm gonna tell you why I think well, I'll tell you why I don't think so. Because those fathers weren't close to their sons, right? I think, I like the ball, no matter how we feel about him, they seem to be right. very. The family seems to be very close, tight knit. Um, right. Which so I, I like. Think, I think what. Right. Right. So. So what. 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 So what I think will happen. I think there'll be a division. There'll be. A, you know what? I'm sorry. I don't think there'll be a division, but I think you'll see maybe a relaxation of of, or maybe the the ball's more. Navarre's mouth will get him in trouble from a distance. Mm-hmm. And you see Lonzo saying things like, uh, "Listen, that's my father. I ain't gonna do it." Like you know what I mean? I had to do with that. But um, <laughs> no, I, I don't. I don't. I don't see. I don't see a, a love, like Lonzo Ball cursing him out on Twitter, or or you know, twenty four right. seven telling him shut the fuck up. And no, I don't. That I don't see. But but, right. but I mean, listen, man. At some point in time, like I mean, listen. I I didn't grow up with a father, so I so I can't speak on this totally. But but you know, the natural the natural thing in life is to be. The the male lion in the pride, right? That's evolution. Right. As far as as far as being being men, you want to be better than your father. You you want to replace that. Right. You you mm-hmm. or you want to find again. You want to find your voice as a man. And there's, there'll be a time when when Lonzo Ball won't be 19. Shit, it, shit might happen during this season because once again, a two game season, New York, Chicago, this is Florida, mm-hmm. uh, 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 USA uh, tryouts. Practices. He's he's, right. he's he's going to be a develop as a man, and you know, and, and that'll mm-hmm. be interesting to see, man. That'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. That'll be very interesting to see. You know what I mean? But so we'll mm-hmm. see, man. We'll see what we'll, yeah, what we'll happens. Can I can I chime in? Oh, oh, maybe oh, when he gets hold on. Pussy. Oh, <laughs> hold on. Let me get my man, uh, Mister Hollis here. Uh, go ahead, brother. Yeah. Um, if I can be allowed to um, express a thought without being interrupted, Mac, is that okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Just one of the, yeah. <laughs> um, let's stop pretending that we give a fuck about LeVar Paul's kids, first of all. I, I hate that whole, oh, what about the kids? Fuck his kids. I don't give a shit about his kids. I'll say it. <laughs> That's his I'm problem, right not me and mine. So let's stop pretending that we care about LeVar Paul's kids. They're going to they be all right. I ain't got no problem with it. Another thing is, that LeVar Ball is sort of like the Donald Trump of, of basketball right now. It's like he's low-hanging <laughs> fruit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, shit. And he's, not, he's, he's more symbolic of a problem than he is the problem itself. Mm-hmm. Because Donald Trump, the reason why Donald Trump is president of the United States is for – you remember I said this a while ago before he became president? I said that Donald Trump isn't the president America needs, but he's the president America deserves. Damn right. It's the same thing with LeVar Ball. LeVar Ball is playing the system and it's working. Let's let's mm-hmm. let's just acknowledge that. All of his antics, all of his bullshit is working. It got his mm-hmm. name out there, he's got his son's name out there. He's playing the system and doing what you got to do in this fucked up world, this fucked up reality that we live in mm-hmm. to get your name and your brand out there. Mm-hmm. It's not about so to me. I'm like indifferent to him. I don't like him or dislike him. I just look at him as simply a symbol of what's wrong with the society. 
Yeah. Same thing with Trump. You know, that's why I don't really say a whole lot about Trump, because it's like low-hanging fruit, man. It's like I see, like, comedians and stuff, you know, making jokes about Trump, and it's like, that's that's so easy. It's not hard. He's an idiot. I mean, to, to say, that's like me going around patting myself on the back because I was able to say that this homeless guy on the A train with feces in his pants is, is you know, oh, man, this guy's really crazy. Like, people pat me on my back for that. Breaking news, that commentary. Mm. I mean, what we should really be talking about is why is this guy the head of of <laughs> the most powerful man in the world? Mm. How did that happen? Mm-hmm. And that has more to do with with this society and people than it has to do with him. Well, yeah. So that's the way I see LeVar Ball. LeVar Ball is just a symptom of a bigger problem. And, and until we start addressing the big problem, it, it, you get rid of him, there's going to be another one that pops up because people have already seen it. It's like you got people right now that think that just because they are on a reality television show that they're a celebrity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because the camera films you on a show, now you're a celebrity. And then I ask, well, what is your talent? What do you do? Well, I go shopping. People, people film me while I shop. Wow. I got followers. I got followers. Wow. Yeah, I have, I have so-and-so followers on Instagram. And t- wow. So that's your talent? What do you actually do? Uh. And that's the problem, man. So I can't mm-hmm. blame a LeVar Ball for being – because he knows that his, re- his behavior will be rewarded. That, and that's that's fucked up. Now that's fucked up. <laughs> you understand? Yes, that's, that's my point. Person. But it, that's but he's my right, point. Though, but he's right though, and, I, and I've said it before. If you keep when Lavar Ball says I could beat Michael Jordan in 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 a one on one, and people got outraged and upset, you the fool. He's, he's trolling. trolling. I said when I when saw this uh, because the, I didn't look at him right. Um, Chad, mm. I never really like I heard about him, but I never really paid him any attention or really looked at his interviews. Then right. I, I said, you know what? Let me check this dude out. I look, I looked at his interview with Stephen A. Smith. This guy is trolling. Stephen A. Smith is yelling at the top of his lungs, he's upset. It's so obvious that he's yeah. trolling. He does. He says whatever's outrageous that will get a reaction, and he smiles when he's saying it. He's, he yes. smiles when he says it. Yeah. And people get upset, yeah. get outraged at him. You get the call. How, how dare, how, how, dare he, yeah. how dare he be a silly buffoon? Well, he knows he's getting over on you guys. He should get exactly. Over he's he's playing. Over. That's why he fit so he well over. when he went to the WWE because it's all an yeah. act. Yeah, I saw people. I saw people upset with his performance at WWE. He fit right in. The fuck was you watching? Uh, I was hilarious. He fit right in. He fit right in. And not for nothing, he's in better shape than I thought he'd be. Nobody, nobody fit right <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Can I, can I add on something that. real quick? Can I add on Wait, something? Wait, before you do, before you do, JR, right. remember the, the announcer JR in the WWE? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I was listening to an interview from him, and he said, he said, LeVar Ball gets it. He said, when he, yeah. when he came right. to the WWE, he said, he gets us. Yeah. That's right. what he said. So there you go. Right, I was, I was. Listen, man. Okay. I'm go ahead, Chad, and then I'll go. No, no, I was saying like, like uh, with the whole jokes on you thing. When people were outraged when Mayweather says, "I'm better than Ali," well, uh, I'm a boxing fan. I know better. If if you want to be dumb enough to get upset about that, that's on you. Who really thought he's gonna be? Who, like who really thought, took him seriously when he said, "I'm, I'm just gonna bat, I'm, I'm gonna put grown man strength on Michael Jordan, and that's how I'm gonna score." And you and, and people were getting upset, making memes, and and showing his college stats. You were doing too much work. <laughs> he got you. He got, got you. you. Yeah, that's he one thing. You ain't gonna get me. Yeah. I know when Triple H is playing back. a heel. Triple H ain't gonna upset right. me when I know he's trying to upset me. It ain't gonna happen. Yeah. My son right. gets mad. My son hates. My son hates these people. My son. My son hates. These, my son hates these people. Yeah, he don't know about. Well, well Chad, didn't we, when we watched when we all watched wrestling younger and we weren't hip to that game, we all hated a certain yeah. guy. Mm-hmm. But but what I wanted to add is that me and R spoke offline, and I told R, I said, mm-hmm. um, "Yo, I caught the first episode of um, 
the right. the ball um, reality TV show, and I said um, it 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 sort of changed my perception of him because um, it, it you know it showed him you know he was subdued. It wasn't Lavar right. Ball on TV. It was Lavar Ball with his family, and you know with his family, right? Right. But I look at his sons. And I look at them play. This is just me as a, a person who loves basketball uh-huh. and watches basketball. <clears throat> they are right. They ain't that good. They, but Mark, you know, doesn't that validate my point? If his sons uh-huh. are all right, and if his sons are just all right, and they're not spectacular basketball players, then right. that just, if anything, that shows you how effective his strategy has been. Well, you yeah, uh-huh. agree with that. Well, Let's be clear, though. That. Let's be clear. You know let's be clear, though. And let's be clear. <laughs> All the la- let's, let's be clear about one thing, though, man. And if you know sports, you know this is true. All the scouting, all the time people put in these things, or the loud mothery ain't gonna make your son be the number two pick and highly valued and highly right. sought after just because mm-hmm. you talk about your shit. Nobody's gonna invest well, the number two pick. And scouts. Like I saw somebody on mm-hmm. I saw. Well, let me say I'm this. Call him out. Let me say this, Mark. He, he, Mark. What? I just, I just want to Mark. for one second. Mark. On. Right. Mark. No. What? No. Let Chad finish what he was fucking saying. <laughs> now, yeah. Yeah. So, like, now you can make a mistake with your pick. But That's no what I was going to say. Father, but no one says, well, his father's loud, so... I'm 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 now I'm gonna pay attention to this kid and believe everything he says and I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna draft the number one and number two. What the fucking happened, man? I remember years ago back in ninety ninety three, my brother was to be drafted. The the, the the belief was he was going to Charlotte, either Charlotte mm-hmm. or Houston, Charlotte Houston. He ended up sabotaging himself or his behavior got him dropped to the second round and he fell to the Lakers, mm-hmm. which ain't the worst thing to happen to you, right? And I remember right. a story came out. A story came out with George Carl. And this is gives you a little insight of how these things work. A story came out with George Carl, George Carl's bitch ass, where he apparently was talking negatively about him after a <laughs> workout. Uh, he had a workout with Seattle, and he, he allegedly dogged the workout because he said he said Gary Payton's here. I'm not playing over Gary Payton, so so this is a waste of time. So this is a little insight of how these teams work. Now, they're not just going to take you because they know your name. Now, they right. might make a mistake. They might draft a bust. You could be a bust, but it's, right. you're not a bust because they took you because they knew your name or because your father was too loud. So let's right. be real here. Let's, not, let's stop letting their, his father – stop letting his father's mouth evaluate his talent. Now, whether he's going to be a bust, we'll see. Time will tell. But it ain't good because his father was right. fucking too loud. Because he, because he couldn't cut it. <laughs> I disagree okay. with that. Yeah, I'm, I can't give that brother credit for putting a target on his son's back. Okay? Yeah, I can't go that far. He, these guys, I mean, yeah, I, I agree actually with everything y'all, y'all saying, but these other NBA elite guards, they're going to go after him just because what the father said. So that is going to affect his son's play. Mm. But that's what you call collateral damage. Out. Right. So, okay, but as, I as a father, okay, I want... let me let me finish. Mm. As as a father mm-hmm. myself, you never want to make a mistake to the point where, as a father, you put burdens on your own kids mm-hmm. because of your foolish acts. That's all I'm saying. They yeah, they gonna be mm-hmm. fine. They rich and everything. But all mm-hmm. I'm saying is he's making it harder for his son to do mm-hmm. his job because he's writing checks that his son's ass can't cash. Right. <laughs> we go. might not ever me... see we might not ever see the player that he could become because his father's already put him behind the eight ball mm-hmm. telling everybody mm. he's gonna be the greatest thing since sliced bread and you got players like John Wall like, man, we go everybody text him like, man, give him the business yeah. every single time. <laughs> I'm not gonna take a night off right. just because he out there. Right. So yeah. I, me, I think that just... he's and the shoe deal right. got messed up too because of his father's Big mouth. All the shoe companies are like, man, just you yeah. know, we could make money. No, There's only so many shit. times you can be black and run your mouth with white people when it comes mm-hmm. to business. And they say, you know what? I'm not even going. I'm gonna kill this deal and not even make money just to show you you talk too much. Let me let me just say mm-hmm. this for a second. Uh, you know, uh, Hollup and, and, and Chad had said something earlier about don't let don't let this guy get you all in your feelings. You know what? <laughs> well, I'm I'm very fucking petty. 
okay? And I'm to get it. That's just what the fuck it is. You understand? I'm going to be fucking petty. Fuck that motherfucker. Yeah, I'm all in my feelings. He just fuck my balls. That's why I'm concerned. Fuck he him. Triggered, he fuck triggered him, you. And fuck him. Yeah, he triggered me, all right. And it, and it, and it worked. Because he got me. I, I don't like that motherfucker. I'll be perfectly honest. Fuck that motherfucker. Yo, I just I just want to say something about the the kids thing. I remember when um and the reason why I made the statement at the beginning. Yeah. I remember when um everybody was talking about Joe Jackson and the Jacksons and they was you know talking about how Michael Jackson didn't have a childhood and he didn't do the things that normal kids did and they was feeling wow, wow, so, wow. so caught up and upset. And I like nigga, if that nigga hadn't bust Michael Jackson ass, I wouldn't have been able That's to right. see dancing machine. So shut the fuck you, up. You being Gary Indiana. You know, nobody cares about, about Michael Jackson. All they care about Gary is the Indiana. fact that he could go out there and do the robot. So that, that's I just don't like the hypocrisy. Yeah, the kids okay. like people people are all about entertainment. That's all they fucking care about. Right. Can you entertain me? That's it. It was more they wanted and more they got, but they put the inner heat with my 